Hey, me Matt here, and just finished watching Raw last night. Yeah, I know, it's late, whatever, but it is what it is. And I gotta say, you know, WrestleMania is shaping up. I mean, it's just one of those things where the company finally has its ass in gear, and it's doing what I think it needs to do in order to hype up Wrestlemania 38 in my opinion but very cool you have Kevin Owens come out to the Stone Cold theme now I mean you have the glass break you think okay Stone Cold's gonna come out that's gonna be interesting so it's actually Kevin Owens now people have made a reference to when Shawn Michaels cut a promo on Hulk Hogan in Montreal mentioning Bret Hart, having Bret Hart's theme. We'll get to that in a second. But you have Kevin come out, Austin 316 shirt, bald cap. Very reminiscent to me of when The Miz came out as The Rock. The spray tan and the bald cap. Yeah, he's smaller than Dwayne Johnson, but you know, it kind of reminded me of that. Even though they didn't necessarily face each other. But yeah, so Kevin comes out. He's talking like a Austin and being obnoxious and whatever. And then, of course, asks for a beer from the outside afterwards. Now, uh, Kevin Steen don't drink no beer. So I thought this was going to be interesting. He didn't necessarily drink it either, but... He, you know, misses that a couple times, gets the cameraman to come over, gets in the ring, tells him to hand himself a beer, and then stuns the guy, basically. So, yeah, ba you know, just interesting to me to see how this is all turning out, because I don't know whether he's going to have a match with Austin. Probably not. There is going to be a fight for sure. There's rumors that Austin is getting into shape, and I think that, you know what, if he does get in the ring again, that would be awesome. I've always loved Steve, I've always been a fan, so we'll see what happens. You have Dominic and Rey Mysterio, who defeated Rudolph, and this was a good match too, and I mean... The veterans in the ring, and it, it, well, and Dominic too, but it's like, it was cool to see the team of Rudolph and go on one on one with these two. I mean, you have Dominic hit the splash, get the win, and then Miz, who was on commentary, got out, beat the shit out of Ray. And grabbed his mask. So Dominic reacting to getting a white towel and putting it on Ray's head. Even though we know what he looks like. So. Yeah. I mean that was interesting. But I mean because of the Lucha Libre culture. You know. That has to happen. So there was a backstage interview where Mrs. Like I want Logan Paul to wear this next week on Monday. Which is a go-home show, which is very weird how time is approaching, I guess. You have a mouse defeating Apollo Crews, of course. You have, I don't know, it was Commander Aziz and Apollo Crews. And I mean, it was a handicap match, which I thought was interesting. And you have, you know... Basically, it was Aziz and almost again, powering out of each other. But anyways, yeah, I most definitely got the win. Stacking both Apollo on top of Aziz and hooking both their legs. So that was interesting. But then Amos picks up the mic, says he's unstoppable and nobody is going to stop him. And he's setting out a challenge for Wrestlemania so it'll be interesting to see 
who answers the challenge because I mean I don't know anybody besides the people who have left the company that can take on almost but we'll see what happens oh am I is Bobby Lashley I'm not sure how injured he is though we got Sheena and Natalia who defeated Liv Brutality I think that's what they're called Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley and I gotta say one of my favorite take teams in the women's division I mean I've always been a fan of Liv Morgan I mean I, I like Sheena Baszler as well never been a real big fan of Natalia but this was a good match obviously Sheena and Natalia did win. Now, their match at WrestleMania against the champions of the New York Scream Queens. I can't wait to see what happens, but you had Carmella come out on commentary. And of course, after the match, you have uh, an attack by Queen Zelina who came out. And basically, yeah. As much as they argued backstage earlier before the match, they're still a good take team. They work well together. We'll just see what happens. I also find it interesting how Zelina goes from her Queen's accent to a uh, British accent and a drop of a hat, so I'm not sure what that's all about. We've got a, an in ring statement with Becky Lynch. Basically coming in with these weird glasses on. She comes over, sits in a chair, talks about how she's the best. And she has a warning for Bianca Belair. Saying that she will beat her ass at WrestleMania. Hopefully she won't be ready because of her damaged vocal cords. But I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. It'll be interesting to see what happens at WrestleMania. But I think Bianca will be fine, obviously. <laughs> you have Finn Balor versus Austin Theory. And of course, joining on commentary was Pat McAfee. And I don't know what it is, but I think I'm starting to grow on Pat McAfee. I think that I've become a little bit of a fan of his. So I mean, it's interesting to me how funny he can be. But Austin tried to get into his head, but Pat basically distracted him while he was in the ring, which gave Finn Balor victory. So Pat raises his hand, they do the too sweet thing, and yeah, I actually honestly can't wait to see Austin Theory and Pat McAfee. It'll be interesting, and I know that Pat isn't really a wrestler, but he has been in matches in NXT, so we'll see how this goes. FRK Pro versus Alpha Academy, and I mean this to me, I don't know, I guess I, I just was disappointed that Alpha Academy lost his titles early on. I mean, it's gonna be another triple threat at WrestleMania with RK Bro and Street Profits. But I mean, I think Alpha Academy not only is dominant, but they're a funny take team. I mean, they really are. I kind of actually enjoy Chad. And, what, and so, anyways, this was a good match. Obviously, RK Bro won. The Street Profits came out, you know, not only beating up. Alpha Academy, but going at it with Matt Riddle. So, it'll be an interesting match on Sunday at WrestleMania, or whenever they're gonna go at it, I guess. So, yeah. You had Dana Brooke and Reggie versus Tamina and Akira Tozawa in a Tornado Take Team match. And then you had this match, the main event. Now, earlier you had. Seth Rollins come out after trying to get another match to prove that he could go at WrestleMania. But then, of course, they were turning up AJ Styles, and AJ comes out and he says, You want the Pitbull? Edge, you got want the Pitbull? 
you got it. And I'm gonna take you down at WrestleMania. So then Seth Rollins comes out, says he wants to face Edge, he wants to be in the ring at WrestleMania. Adam Pierce and Sony Deville came out and said, Hey, you know what? I think that this is a good idea to have a match. So of course later on it was Seth Rollins and AJ Styles and I was very impressed. They took a lot of sick bumps. I mean, I think it was Seth Rollins that smacked his head off the apron after getting tossed out. We got AJ doing a bump on the steel steps. And this was pretty fucking amazing. Really enjoyed it. And so I got AJ, who's gonna do the phenomenal forearm and gets a chair shot from Edge, which causes a disqualification. And I'm, you know, impressed when WWE censors kind of drop the ball or they don't clue in. And it's kind of like you wouldn't get that in WWE 10 years ago. And I thought this was just for the fucking, like, Thunderdome and stuff, but whatever. Seth gets on the mic. He just goes, this is bullshit! And then he kept saying bullshit a bunch of times. And I'm like, well, that's pretty fucking cool. Because I know AEW says bullshit and shit and all that kind of whatever. So it's weird to see that in WWE, but still. There's rumors that Cody Rhodes is going to make it to WrestleMania. Now, I mean, he's just signed another contract. So why he left AEW, I don't know, but it's apparent that, you know, there could be a Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes match, which if we know what happened with Cody in 2016, basically he left because of the Stardust gimmick. You know, he had that, he had the dash and Cody Rhodes, he had, you know, who knows what they're going to make him do. But there's a reason why he left. So we'll see what happens, obviously. But anyways, that was Raw. Pretty good show. The main event was awesome, in my opinion. But there it is. Talk to you later. Bye. Oh, so you know that them cutting WCW was a long time coming. But, you know, I think that there's this myth out there that Jamie Kelly no, really. took pleasure in cutting WCW. I don't think that's the case at all. If you look at some of his earlier interviews that he 